The Real Kipper and Bourne Show, Leaf Edition. We're live on Sportsnet 590, Sportsnet 360, Sportsnet Plus from 4 to 6. If you don't catch us live, get us on a podcast. And remember to always text us 590, 590 all week, and we'll get to the good ones. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Derek Brandeo, Jen Rolnick, and recently called up from the Bunkus League, <laughs> Sammy hey. McKee. Welcome back. Welcome ha- back. Really happy to be back, boys. Yeah. Uh, nice long Easter weekend. Had Friday off. Just really enjoyed myself. Good. But I will say, I, I missed you guys. Yeah, you know, we miss you too. Sammy. It's a long time to be, you know, away for four full days without seeing you two. The show's attendance this year has been sparkling. I it think, has been. It I don't has. think Borny's missed one. I'm still I think, going strong. I think you've missed you missed three to go to Florida. I did, and I've missed three total. So six games out of how many games we've played Man all year? Lost. We're doing good, boys. That's, that's durability. durability. That's incredible. The best ability is availability, and we're available. So I'm really happy to be back, and uh, yeah, it's nice to see you guys. Yeah, you too, bud. Yeah. Uh, and good Kip Easter got week. a fresh haircut. Yeah. yeah, you were kind of in light Eastery fun colors. Yeah, I did. nice weekend. They're hanging in. The feathers are hanging in. Buddy, I'm jealous. You are. You're hanging in there good. That's great. What are you worried about? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm losing them. Really? What? Oh, yeah. It's no, bad. It's going back deep, boys. It's I, I'm fighting it. Buddy, hang on. I'm, I'm, I'm 41. It's going now. I got no chance. It might be time to fly to Turkey, pal. You got to- <laughs> <laughs> I get a fourth the trip. I wish you had golf. Maybe yeah, I'll give up golf true. and go to Turkey. That's true. That's All true. right. <laughs> we got a big game tonight. Oh, baby. Coming off a weekend in which the Toronto Maple Leafs Shut out the Buffalo Sabres on the back of Austin Matthews, scoring 60 goals for the mm-hmm. second time in his career. And now just a handful have ever done it before. Yeah. Ninth player in NHL history with multiple 60-goal seasons. It's a heck of a run. Can you name the other eight? With two 60-goal seasons? Yes. Yari Curry. Okay, yes, correct. Brett Hall. Correct. Ovi. Nope, nope. Just one for him. Oh, just one for Ovi? Mm-hmm. 65, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. I'm you terrible. This Gretz, is Marcel Dion. Gretz, Gretz, Mario. Gretz only did it five times, though. So. <laughs> Mario. Mario, correct. Was Dion one? Marcel Dion? No. Nope. Uh, I can give him to you. No, no. Wait. Oh, okay. So you have, who'd you, you have Gretzky. Yes. Peter Svoboda. You said, uh, Cur- uh, I said that you had Curry. Uh, Hall. Oh. So you got three. Yeah. Of eight. So this is great radio. I got three. Yeah. Gretzky, Mario. Oh, yeah, you said Mario. Yeah, so you have four. Yep. Can you just give us the names? Uh, Bossy. Yes. Five times. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. Uh, The other ones are Pavel Bure and Stevie Eiserman and Phil Esposito. Very good company. That's we, crazy. If we had sat here for another 30 minutes, I, I don't know. I don't know if I get all three yeah. at the end. <laughs> but anyway. There you go. Uh, and a good goal, too. Like, I kind of feel like I'm not going to be denied goal. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was. it was funny play. Like, the demon had lost his stick, and he picked the pocket there. And I, I think he felt he should have scored on the breakaway. But, yeah, really stuck with it and dug one in there. And a celebration by the crowd in Buffalo. I will say, Uka Pekka Lukanen, yeah. right? He robbed Matthews a, a solid three or four times. Yeah. And it happened to him the game before against Lindgren. Lindgren, where he stoned him. And that save on the breakaway he makes when Bo Byram blows his stick up really good. was a great one. He just gets the front of that and he goes in. But yeah, we, I asked this question on Eat Leafs Talk last you two. Was it better that it happened there than in Toronto? I feel like it was a better reception than it would have been here. Well, you got more, I would say, authentic Leafs fans, people who probably wanted to spend less but loved them enough to travel. And, you know, you had a – I just – Kip, can you defeat a franchise more thoroughly than the Leafs have beat the Sabres by import – they own their building. Did you catch some of the comments? And I'm a bad producer. I forgot to grab the clip. Yeah, that's all good. But Tristan wouldn't have forgotten. <laughs> he would have forgotten to load them in the system, yeah. but he wouldn't have forgotten I, to to clip them. Anyways, the red light went on. I, I was like, I think it was um, <laughs> cousins, Dylan yeah. cousins, cousins and Alex Tuck. That that they were so dejected after the game, and I think it had a lot. It had everything, not just the loss, because we know they've had a lot this year. Yeah, but just the feel in their hometown building to get absolutely steamrolled by the crowd was as disheartening as I've heard players after a game regarding 
their fans. Yeah, he he his cousin said something like it's something if we could get that support like that on the road someday it would be great. And to say that like we know that we have to build that. You know, mm. these guys were basically looking at what had happened over their time in Buffalo and really Leafs fans have just Ugh. Yeah, but the last time they went down there, though, those fans had lost 9-3. So yeah. it can go but, either but way. It can go either way, but yeah. the fact is that they're there, you well, know, even to see the loss. But it's the it's the opportunity that Sabre fans are allowing the Leafs to go out and, and, and go get their building. Now, is that all secondary market ticket sales? It's just the ones that aren't scooped up by Buffalo fans first. Yeah. And, like... If I'm not to derail this thing to to Buffalo's no, but we should talk organization, about it. but like if I'm the owner Terry Pagula, yeah, I can't let Saturday night happen ever that again. That was the ultimate humiliation. Okay? To I, I I don't care what I need to do, if I need to buy the tickets myself, yeah. and hand them out myself, but I cannot allow that building with Leaf fans to humiliate my players ever again. Wasn't there something at the start of the year where they were going to limit it or there was a way they were going to limit it, like an area I thought there code was like thing? A ticket license, too. There was, they, they definitely had made some effort. But, but If you're a season ticket holder and the Sabres reek, they stunk for however many years, yeah. and you're like, well, I got to make back some money here. I don't want to go to watch this team. You're like, well, I'll make triple what my ticket's worth uh, I don't on think one it's night. a moral failing for a, no. a Sabres fan to sell their tickets. I just think that, you know, as the owner of the team, you got to find a way to keep them in Sabres fans' hands. Yeah. Okay, in about 30 minutes, we're going to welcome in former NHL defenseman Ed Jovanovsky, who uh, has played over 1,100 games in the National Hockey League and current TV analyst for Bally Sports, covering the Florida Panthers, who, by the way, are 4-5-1 and one in their last 10. Ooh, what a soft which means playoff foe they'll be. A little vulnerable, maybe, coming into tonight's big game. So we'll get uh, Jovo's thoughts on that. In the meantime, just to go over uh, Saturday night, let's go to Sheldon Keefe for our first Kipper's Clipper of the Week on his overview in Buffalo things I really liked in the game, some that I certainly did not like, um, you know, but the things that I liked, I think, is what we'll, we'll focus on the most here tonight. You know, I thought we, I thought we defended really hard, um, and when I say that, I, think I thought we defended too much, and uh, the game was a little chaotic, but uh, especially in the first two periods, it was the majority of what looked like their scoring chances didn't get to the net because our guys like second third efforts we got sticks on pucks we got bodies in lanes we collapsed to the net we killed a lot of chances before they could really before they become really dangerous uh and you know that's so that that effort and competitiveness i really liked from our team and that let that led right into our penalty kill which was uh, really good tonight uh so that type of urgency is is excellent to see what did you think of what he had to say? Yeah. I think that, if I'm being honest, I thought that the last period of when Matthews scored in that little, you know, quote-unquote brawl, which was far from a brawl, I thought it kind of papered over a pretty sleepy game for a lot of it that was just, like, a little sloppy and they got bailed out by their goalie a lot. But, yeah, I think you need that over the course of an 82-game season. Kippy? Okay, and don't ever use brawl with what we saw. Yeah, that's Saturday. what I mean. That's that why I said quote-unquote. Like, yeah. It was... It's more of a dance than anything. Oh, my goodness. Well, I was just saying to Sam before the show, like, if you're McMahon and Tuck in that whole thing, like, have a fight or don't fight. (laughs) You're both there. You got your, you're hugging each other. If you're mad at each other, fight. (laughs) If you're not mad, don't fight. What is this? I don't know. Two step you're doing. I don't know. Either do it or don't. And he keeps going on. It's like. I did get a couple of texts from (laughs) ex players that were giggling at that attempt of. Showing something, I don't know, but it's fine. It's better than nothing. I'm fine. I'm it's the very 2024. Oh, it's a Gen Z bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is, boys. That's it's exactly just, it's what a it Gen was. Z yeah. bro. That's what it was. Yes. If you're not mad, just don't just fine. let him go. He's yeah, not trying to get fine, anywhere. But the one thing that I'm watching this Saturday night, and I'm hoping tonight kind of corrects itself, mm-hmm. but I didn't see anything Saturday night that can help you prepare for a Stanley Cup playoff game other than the performance from Samsonov. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was it. 
That's all I grabbed out of Saturday night. I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it. You know, they were without a lot of bodies, right? They were without very good players in Riley and Marner, we know, and then Mm -hmm. some good secondary players. They're playing in Buffalo. They didn't play great. They probably got outplayed, right? They're outshot. But their goaltender was excellent. They have finishing ability. They got a win on the road. Great. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to be overly critical of that, but the bright spot for sure was, well, one, the penalty kill being better, but mostly that the goaltender... I think that's the best I've seen Samsonov play this year, maybe. Mm. I thought he was really composed. That's a nice warm-up for me, yeah. yeah. I thought he was really composed, and I felt very good about where his game was at. Okay, let's uh, let's pick up Sheldon Keefe on his goaltender's performance Saturday night. We'll respond. He's just a talented goalie, you know, that's found himself, whatever it's been now, a couple months ago, and... and uh, you know, he believes in himself. He's worked at it. You know, I talked to Curtis Sanford after the game tonight, and he actually felt, uh, never mind the big saves and stuff like that, but he just thought technically that this was his best game of the season, just how he moved in the net, uh, how, how he was in control and in position to be able to make those big saves because of how he was managing the game and his depth and all those sorts of things that are so important that I don't know very much about. But, you know, when they, when they show me and talk to me, it makes sense. And, and that he was really good in that area tonight, so he gave himself every opportunity to be in position to make the big save when we needed him to and like I said I thought uh, especially in the first two periods our guys really did a nice job of um, sort of <clears throat> settling down some of the chaos in the game by not not letting the pucks get to our net but with second and third efforts from from our guys defending okay there you go Curtis Sanford backed you up it is very funny though is there any other sport like this where the head coach of the biggest team in the sport is like I don't uh, know I don't what know that guy's lots. supposed to do. <laughs> like talking about goaltending, he's like, he knows, I don't know about that stuff. Like, he's just. That, that's one thing between me and Keith that we really see eye to eye. I just hate goalies. Yeah. Like, uh, he I just. Don't know a lot. <laughs> he never... I don't know a lot about that. It look good. <laughs> Dress Sanford. So at least start. Uh, a week ago, we were, we were questioning who was it going to be, and we've got our answer right now. No question. Samsonov no. is the number yeah. one goalie of the Toronto Maple Leafs going into the last yeah. single digit games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is 100% his net to lose now. Okay. Um, so Joseph Wall, his last game was excellent, right? Played very well. Yeah. And I was at a 5-1 win against Washington, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was excellent. He played very well in that win. So two of his last three games, he's been very good. Okay. So my point is, can yeah. he play well enough? Even if Samsonov's just, no. okay, he can't play well no. enough to there's take not enough, out, there's out of his hands. There's not enough runway left. In the season, and we aren't. We're talking about Samsonov since January first. Yeah, we're not talking about Samsonov the last week, week yep. and a half, two yep. weeks. We're talking about a fairly big chunk of a measuring stick right now, going into the last couple of weeks here of the season. Yeah, and that to me again means a very, very. About face for him mm-hmm. to lose his net. Yeah, since January first, the highest winning uh, winning percentage among goalies. Uh, Samsonov's first minimum yeah. twenty games played. He's a seven seventy five with Skinner at seven fifty nine and Ottinger at yeah. seven forty one. They're I not going to mess with that now. They're not going to now play head games uh, going into the last uh, what nine games. Yeah, I you know I still feel like it's going to come. <laughs> Listen, it's it's April 1st. They play Listen, nine I, more games. If one guy's bad three times and the other's good four Listen, times, you know, and going into the final two, and it's Wall playing good. That, to me, is a meltdown. Sure. Right? That's a major meltdown that he's going to... Have he's three gonna, bad games? He's, he's going to chunk. <laughs> he's going to yeah, chunk a, a shot. Massive drive. A massive gonna drive. <laughs> he's going to hit one fat <laughs> three times. Yeah. Scotty Scheffler missing a six footer for yeah. the time. I, I really do. You know, this is the stupid conversation that we have all the time, but like, I tend to agree with Kipper that he's established himself as the number one yeah. goalie. And I was wall guy through and through. And what I've seen from Samsonov, it's good enough to tell me that he's starting game one. Who the hell knows about game two? And that's yeah. why I hate the two goalie thing. I know that's it. But Listen, what if we go into tonight where Samson is starting, right? He is the starting goalie for tonight against the Florida Panthers. And they shoot five past him on 16 shots. And then what are we saying tomorrow? 
highest. You know road. what we're saying? Uh, we're crack. saying, one. We're, we're, saying what, <laughs> we're, we're saying what we've been saying all year long, and you know your reaction to Samsonov starting with that smile is you don't trust him, right? You don't don't confuse that he's he may right. not he's start starter, game but one. You don't with, trust him. You don't trust him. Yeah. He could run the table for the next nine games, and you will still go into game one and go, I don't trust him. Yeah, you're so, so right. So that's that's, <laughs> that's all it is, and I, I won't argue with that. Yeah. But he, yeah. he's earned it. He's earned it based on the, the body of work since January 1st. I also think it's no small statement that they're playing the Florida Panthers tonight, who are their likely round one opponent, and the mm-hmm. Leafs three weeks before playoffs have said, that's the guy. But what does intrigue me mm. is this was the logic with Joseph Wool getting two starts against Boston just a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And don't forget that before Wall got hurt, he was the unchallenged number one of this team. Samsonov was being shipped off to Siberia. He was going to be the guy, you know, he gets hurt. He comes back. They give him the biggest games. He has a couple slow starts, but now he's playing well. They want him to be the guy. He's going to be here. If they have the chance to make Wall the guy, I still think it can happen, yeah. but to your point, it's Florida tonight. They're, they are saying that he's the guy to play Florida, who, by the way, have the best road-winning percentage in the season, so Samsonov has his hands full. Four to the nine games left for the Toronto Maple Leafs in the regular season are against Florida and Tampa Bay, which I kind of think sucks, to be honest with you. But they'll Why? Because they're, they're tough games to kind of – you can you're gonna overreact to the games, mm. and I don't believe in necessarily taking your foot off the gas pedal because you you need to play a certain way, mm. and it's not an off and on switch. But they also play Florida April sixteenth. Mm-hmm. I, I don't care what the goaltending situation is. I don't think you want Samson off to play in that game in a perfect world, yeah. or maybe even Wall. It might be right, it could Marty be Jones. Jones getting a start. Could be for sure. Right? I think they would want to get Jones yeah. a starter too. Yeah. I really do. Yeah. But tonight, I, I think, I think it's a good game for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Again, where do you sit on the probability that these two teams play each other, and what do you, what do you think you may avoid by, by not playing that hard or yeah. not putting too much emphasis on tonight's game? But I think it's an opportunity that can help build character for the Leafs tonight I just don't like that they're playing now because a lot of the season is sort of decided you know like I understand that there's standings jockeying going on a little bit but like if the Leafs play their tail off and get super hot and catch Florida and pass them and get home ice advantage okay like and, they're still playing Florida like it was like you help them and, maybe it helps them one two percent I don't know and but. if somehow some way they end up you know getting relegated to the Wild card. The wild card spot, same also, thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah give me a really psychologically. Good team. Give me Boston. Psychologically, give me the Rangers, whatever. Psychologically, if we were talking about a team that should have and was expected to win the Atlantic Division, ends up the uh, eighth spot mm-hmm. in in the playoffs. That doesn't have a psychological effect going well, into game one. They can't be eighth. They could be seventh. seventh. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I understand your point. I yeah. know what you're saying. Um. Yeah, like, I guess, I guess, but I still don't think it would affect their chances of winning that series, which to me would be the exactly the same percent chance of winning. You know, if if they get Boston or the Rangers or Florida, they got a 49% chance of winning in my book, so. Um, against my best judgment, I did cut some Palmer East clips this morning. Ooh. Yeah, went, uh, he spoke to the media for 10 full minutes in Toronto, which is. Can we just listen to the interview his, we did with his, him again? His Super Bowl, of course. Yeah. Uh, the, he, the clip three there, Derek, he's talking about like setting the tone for a playoff matchup and playing this close to the playoffs and doesn't matter. And he spoke on that very topic. So if you want to play that for us, clip three. No, like, I think none, like zero effect. Right. Like, truly, like, like we got a certain style of hockey that we play. They have one. We're both going to play it tonight. And then if we see each other in two weeks, nobody's going to remember this game except for you guys. <laughs> like, truly. We're going to play hard. They're going to play hard. It's game 74-ish. I think, what are they at, 73, 74? Okay. So there's both teams have had strong enough years that they got to play eight more games for the playoffs. You know, and yeah, everybody wants to feel good, but everybody wants to get to the playoffs pretty hard. 
the difference in the standings between Boston, us, and maybe even Tampa is probably based on the schedule. Uh, what a line that is. I don't agree with Paul. No, and I don't think he agrees with himself. And uh, it has no bearing, he says, off the top of that clip. It yeah. doesn't matter tonight. See, I, I, tonight I, think doesn't there's, matter. I think there's more upside for the Leafs than there is Florida tonight. Because Florida has their rep and everything established well, and they're yeah, the perceived favorite. And We know their style of play, mm -hmm. right? And this is where I think the Leafs can get some upside is that th they got to they gotta ramp up their style of play. And I would... I would be, if I'm Sheldon Keefe tonight, I'm pushing my team to have a style of play that we saw against the Edmonton Oilers a, uh, a Saturday ago. Mm -hmm. Whereas, go challenge yeah. their better players. And I know Edmondson is not in the lineup, but there's McCabe in the lineup. There's Labushkin in the lineup. There's McMahon in the lineup. Uh, Benoit. There's Benoit in the lineup. Go, mm -hmm. Reeves go, in the lineup. Go challenge them, and if if you can have some success like you did against Edmonton with that style of play, and it plays into your favor, and perhaps even win in the hockey game, we are going to remember this game well, in game that's, one. Th that's the thing that we're not going to remember this game. You will if something happens. You know, like if there's bad hits or fights or an eight nothing route or you know whatever it may be. But there's certainly the possibility that you remember it. The thing is, Kip, I just don't think that is going to become the Leafs' identity. You know what I mean? Like, they're not going to become the team that suddenly... But that's the kind of team that they're going to have to become in the playoffs, JB. I'm sorry. You're not just outskilling teams in April. It doesn't work. You know, it, it doesn't often. I agree. You know, but, like, the Penguins win their cup. They're not overly heavy. You know, they're not overly defensive. It's just... It's rare, I know. They need more of this defensive mm. element mm. or this physical element. So I just, the Leafs decor can be that. The forwards, I don't know. By the way, there is a stat that uh, these teams are one and two in the NHL in hits per game this year, which do you believe the Leafs are second in the league in hits per game this year? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I do. I mean, they got their their decor specifically. Yeah. They run into people. Just, McKay, Benoit. They're just not. Abushkin. They're not punishing yeah. and they're not intimidating. That's right. what's missing in the Leafs' hits. Correct. So yeah, Ryan Reeves. It'll be interesting to see if Reeves. Let's say Reeves takes it to, you know, Sam Bennett or whoever. Like, can he stir it up enough to stay relevant in this series? And same I, lineup. Yep. Put it on uh, same line tonight as in Buffalo. The Leafs are second in the NHL right now in different combinations of defensemen with 25 this mm. season. They've had 25 different D pairs, which is fascinating. Uh, you like their penalty kill? Yes, the penalty kill. Against um, one of the worst power plays in the league? Well, you know, it's funny because I did write an article last week and said, I'm not that worried about their penalty kill. And then three straight games, they have not given up a penalty kill goal. And yeah, not against we, a great power play. But We have a clip on it. Clip, uh, clip three from Keith talking about it on Saturday night. Already? Well, we've, we've spent a lot of time on it. Um, obviously, it was required and probably long overdue. But um, the guys have really rallied. You know, we, we've made some adjustments to it. You know, we're killing a little bit differently in some areas. And the guys have bought into that and adjusted on the fly with the limits of practice time. But um, so much of the penalty kill just comes down to will and competitiveness and all of those sorts of things. And uh, like I said, I, I, I liked a lot of that area of our game at five on five. And I thought it went right into our, our penalty kill too. So uh, that was that's great to see. And when, when you're doing those things, especially with the penalty kill, it's six kills tonight. You know, that's obviously it's a major... Um, major part of the game, you know, that allows us to hold the lead all throughout the game and be in a comfortable position and not allow momentum to swing back and forth. Hey, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, that's about it. Well, like, they're, I mean, statistically, they have a bad power play, but they don't have awful players out there. 
Like, Dalene's a good power play player. Mm -hmm. Tage Thompson was a really good power play player last year. Like, they have guys in that power play that are somewhat intimidating, Kip. I know they're... They're 29th. I know, they Kip. Yeah, okay. They stink. They stink. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, guess what? Guess who else is... Uh, At least PK's 27th. It's Reeks. <laughs> so, the fact that they went 0 for 6 is impressive Sounds to like me. a fair fight to me, and they, they won. <laughs> they've, made, they've made crappy power plays look great. Yeah. We're going to find out tonight Philly's because it's a top five power play in, in Florida. Yep. Led by Sam Reinhardt. Mm -hmm. What's Sam, he got? 20, 25? Sam Reinhardt has the highest, third highest percentage of a team's power play goals uh, since 1993. He has over 44% of the Florida power play goals are off his stick. So he's the guy who shoots it in the net yeah. an insane amount. Might be a good idea to cover him. <laughs> yeah. And when they get a power play goal, they win uh, at an 850 clip which is the highest since 2013, I think. Wow. So they're good when they score in the power play. So definitely a key area of the game to watch for tonight. The Sam Reinhardt thing is out of this world. He's shooting 25% this year. Uh, do you think Austin Matthews getting a 10-minute misconduct will hurt his Lady Bing chances, Kipper? Again. <laughs> if I didn't find that whole episode embarrassing enough, giving him a 10-minute misconduct... It was like a joke. Yeah. Not to mention Benoit's uh, interference penalty. Oh my god! But so you didn't like the you didn't like the end of the game. It's listen. I, whose angle do you want? Leafs fine. You're up three nothing. Nobody get nobody needs to get hurt here. Mm -hmm. Leafs are fine. Mm -hmm. Buffalo on the other side. Come on, I leave leave taking a little bit off the other team yeah something give me something give me some passion and emotion not this fake little pillow fight do -si -do. The, right. the sabers are they're hurting man they're, they're hurting. embarrassing it's they need to untangle that knot there. yes it's a mess yeah. it's tough to watch from the I, crowd i love to, buffalo fans i just you know the Pagulas need to get involved right? a little bit, right? Like they were, they basically are all Bills now. Sounds oh, like they don't deal with do the they, Sabres at do all. Do they care at uh, all? It doesn't seem like it at this point. But. No, it doesn't. It's not pretty. All right. Just sell the team. Somebody will buy it. Oh, my God. Who wouldn't buy it right now? I mean, the best asset that would have a ton of value, they start well, winning games. Unfortunately, it's not for sale because the Leafs own them. Ah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. More on the matchup tonight, or do we want to break now or do no, you no, we can do a little bit more on the okay. uh because keith talked about the panthers tonight and said you know on the matchup against them and what if last spring plays into tonight at all and yep. that sort of thing so we can listen to clip five from keith there uh, uh, uh i think it's less about what happened in the in the spring i mean we've got we've got a lot of different people here um i think that it's it's more so just it's it's a really good team Playing a good team, it's a divisional team, a team that plays you hard, doesn't give you an inch. So, you know, it's a uh, game is very competitive in nature because of uh, the style of play and, and all of that. And it couldn't be more polar opposite than the types of games and types of types of, you know, our style of games that we played last week. So it's going to be uh, a different feel that we've got to be ready for. It is good, Kip, to play these teams and that different style he's talking about before oh, playoffs. Listen, you don't um, want to play the Buffalo and Washington. I've and you've been right there with me talking about Florida, a lot to like about Florida, but I am, I am catching them a little bit more vulnerable right now. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I know they've been losing a bit. Yeah, four, five, and one in their last ten. Yeah, and I don't know, like. I'm a huge Barkov fan, but this guy can come up with a goofy injury every once in a while. Mm -hmm. He seems to always be a little bit in and out of the lineup. I mean, I think managing expectations last year, this time, what did they need? Pittsburgh to lose to Chicago and yeah, Columbus to get, to get in. Yeah. So, so that's gone. Mm -hmm. That that. Us mm. against the world is gone. Oh. This is now managing expectations. They've had me and you and a lot of other people go on this is the team to beat. And I still think right? they probably are, they are. Are they feeling a little bit that at, at four, five, and one? Mm -hmm. I like where you're going, Kippy. 
underdog Leafs, nothing to lose going in against the uh, the uh, big favorites. I think there's something to be said there, Sammy. Other, but, nothing to lose other than every person that works in the front office and coaching <laughs> staff. <laughs> but, you know, to, to your point, Kip, like, they weren't that good a team last year. Like, during the regular season, they weren't that good a team. They snuck in playoffs oh, they, by a literal point. They struggled. They sneak in. They, they get a huge win against the Bruins, right? A comeback win against the Bruins, and all of a sudden the good vibes are going and they, they're able to take that to the final. We saw the Montreal Canadiens, you know, have a Stanley Cup final run a lot that long ago, and that team, I'll just say it, they stunk. Mm -hmm. You know, it can happen, and then all of a sudden people look at this team and go, you guys should be winning. And I look at their lineup and go, okay, Evan Rodriguez and Sam Bennett are on the second line. You know, Luce Doreen and Gadjevic, Stenlin, Lomberg. Like, I'm just saying they're not the 1960s Canadians. Were the Canadians good in the sixties? Seventies, seventies, okay, really good. Um, Leafs in the sixties were really good. <laughs> okay, yeah. so yeah, that's the idea here: is that this is a good team, a legitimately good team, but I don't think they're unbeatable. And they went Sorry, out and got they went out and got a guy like Tarasenko, who is still a very talented guy, but I don't know how's how's his lip dragging playing thirteen minutes a night now. Is he playing thirteen a night? I don't think much more than that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's... I don't know. I, all I know is sometimes it can have a negative effect around guys if some guys feel like they're not getting their just due. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's not playing a ton. You're right. His last 5, 12, 13, 15, 12, 14. Down. I don't even think Pozo was the captain of the Buffalo Sabres. Was he not? He was. Yes. Is he... Is he, is he even in the lineup? I don't see him in there 12, just looking at daily face-off as we're talking. So those are pickups that haven't exactly worked out for them that well. Yeah. Which can kind of throw a little bit of chemistry off. Sure. Ekblad has come back. You know, that should, should help them out a little bit. He's another walking band-aid. Yeah. You know, it's funny. You're talking about uh, Barkov. His last four seasons, 66, 50, 67, 68 games. So he never played 70 games. Always misses 12 yeah. to 17 always got games. goofy little things going on. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, he prone to, to going away at any point. So get the boys out there hard on him early. <laughs> Lean so on him, Sammy. This is, this is, like, I always, my spidey senses are tingling with Kip here. He's setting it up what? so the Leafs should win so we can lean on him harder when they don't. Bingo. I remember oh. after the Leafs beat the Lightning in the first round, I should like, they got to sweep these guys. They're going to hey, sweep them. I, I, had an, I had an usher at the Raptors game yesterday <laughs> go to me, hey, tell Kipper, be nicer to the Leafs. There, I, he, he, I, goes, did he, I not... he goes, even when they win, he's hard on them. I said, listen, he's the worst. He's the worst. I'm doing my best, <laughs> trying to work with this guy. Listen, uh, I've seen where bars need to be set to win a Stanley Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah. That's all. That's all I'm saying. Expectations are completely reasonable and something champions have to deal with. Yes. I don't think it's unfair. I, 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 I do like to joke about it. In the back of my mind, too, great built-in excuse night for the Leafs tonight. No Riley, no Marner, no Edmondson, no Lilligren. Like, you're missing four guys, and you can just be like, ah, I know. It's like they don't even have their playoffs type, type lineup. Here's my prediction for tonight's game. Mm. One of Samsonov and Bobrovsky is terrible. One of them. I don't know which one. But I think it's just like two two guys where it's going to be a narrative based. All right, thing. okay. All right. We'll That's look my for that. For so wow. let me get this straight. Uh -oh. All this all this time you're on the show with me and JB. Yeah. You're not only like analyzing the Toronto Maple Leafs, but uh -huh. you're, you're analyzing me. Uh, yeah, yeah. See, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that one bit. Okay. Uh, can't be. I love you, buddy. All right, let's take a quick break. We come back. Ed Jovanovski, another guy who's analyzing. The Florida Panthers for us on the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. The Kipper host Justin Bourne, fresh off his stint in the East Coast League. Sammy McKee. Fought his way up. He's looking good here. Uh, Get it in deep. Thank you. Change early. Uh, Austin doesn't look like he's uh, he wants to slow down at all. Playing, playing a different game. Without Marner, he plays. He's is a different it, human. Is game. it nine games left? Better game. Better game. You think better game? I do. I think he plays. The goals. He's not on a goal a game pace or anything, but he has. He has looked better, more complete for me. Snapping it around way more to me. 
All right. We got Jovo. Let's get uh, Ed Jovanoski involved in our Real Kipper and Board show as he preps for a Toronto Maple Leaf Florida Panther game. Jovo, thanks for joining us, man. Really appreciate it. Uh, the Leafs and the Panthers have uh, nine and eight games, respectively, uh, left in the season, but two against each other. So how much stock do you put into tonight's contest? Well, I think when you look at the Panthers, I mean, four or five and one in the last 10, I, I think they hopefully found a little spark last game, played better. Um, you know, playing these teams that are hungry for playoff position, there's no easy game. So played a, played a decent game, and hopefully they found some level of, you know, excitement in their group and, and find that consistency going into the playoffs. So, yeah, I mean, you look at both teams are playing for points. Uh, trying to get their game in order. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's an important game for, for both teams. Jovo, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, wanted to get your thoughts on, you know, the the skid that Florida has been on. You talk about them getting excited for playoffs. Has it just been that they kind of know roughly where they're going to be in the standings and just trying to get to the games that really matter? Well, I mean, you. I mean, you guys both know. I think it's a long, long year, and the, the team has been so consistent this year. So I think we know who they are as a group. So when we see this little skid, it could alarm a little bit, but there's no reason to hit the panic button. I, I think this group, you know, at some point was going to probably go through a little stretch where, you know, some defensive miscues, some some lack in scoring. And they hit that the last 10 games. And, um, you know, hopefully, you know, just talking to the guys, I, I think they're all comfortable kind of where they're at. Um, but they certainly want to get their game going and feeling good about every aspect of their game, you know, heading into the playoffs. Joe, we were, we were speaking moments ago about expectations and how this time last year Florida wasn't even in a playoff spot and then made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final. A much different feel here in terms of expectations. Uh, how do you think they, they, they can handle it uh, with the experience that they have in the room led by um, by Barkov, I would imagine? Yeah, I, I, Kipper, I think you, when you look at this group, you know, they've, they've kind of climbed the last handful of years. You know, there were a couple first-round you know, losses last year kind of sputtering. Uh, finding life kind of in January time and, and really playing well heading into the playoffs and being, you know, a few wins away from winning it all. Uh, this year, differently. They came out of the gate, started excellent, been really consistent, like I said. So, yeah, I mean, the expectations are winning a Stanley Cup, I, I think, for this group. Uh, they, they added, you know, a couple guys in, in Tarasenko, uh, being in Buffalo so I feel that Bill Zito believes that the pieces are there and that they have the team to have a long playoff run but I, I think if you ask anyone in the organization you know what are the goals I, I think this team is in the position to really contend for the cup you know, one of the uh, most important things to have for deep playoffs run is some of these elite guys who can score goals and produce. Sam Reinhardt having a career year. How much of his career or his success this season is, you know, kind of knowing where to be, playing with Barkov, stuff like that? Like, is he controlling play and controlling games or just an excellent finisher for the Panthers? Well, he's an excellent finisher for sure on the power play. I mean, I'm not a huge stat guy, but I think he's got 25 or 26 power play goals. You know, he's he's a very, you know, smart hockey player. He seems to be in a good position, always at the right time to to have a good look at shooting the puck. Uh, but, you know, you hear Paul Maurice talk about it. When things aren't going well, he'll go to Sam Reinhardt. He's probably a coach in the making one day. I think his his hockey IQ is, is very high. But, you know, like I said this morning on a couple of shows, I, I think you really good. Obviously, him being a pending UFA, you have to look at, you know, the situation where Sam Reinhardt is. And I think he understands that, who he's played with. And he's not a guy like he's going to wow you. He's not going to be a Matthews, take you out of your seat. Uh, but he just seems to, you know, finish on plays. But a lot has to do with his line mates, the system he plays, and the positions he's put in. 
So basically what I'm saying is recognize that when you're going to UFA so we can keep him here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy's not that good. <laughs> We're talking to Ed Jovanovsky, who covers the Florida Panthers uh, for Bally Sports. So uh, you mentioned a couple of late cha- or, uh, late trades uh, at the deadline, including Tarasenko. I know he got off to a pretty good start with a couple of goals early, but where's the fit here? Because I see the minutes probably aren't where he thinks he should be right now. So, you know, acceptance of any role, or is this a guy that wants to be a big part of this thing in the top six? Well, I would think... Yeah, being in that role, I mean, Tarasenko is, is a goal scorer. I think you got to get him the puck. He's got an excellent shot. So I think having him in your bottom six is probably not what they've envisioned for him if he does end up in that area. But you look at him, he's had some great games, had some games where, you know, has been that, you know, noticeable. But I, I think coming into this situation, maybe a little bit of a different system, but you could see when he's going and he's skating, Coming off that off wing, he's he's uh, very good at finishing. And listen, the guy's won before. He's had uh, he's had an excellent career. So you got to put some value in that, knowing you know what it takes to go through a long playoff run. And adding him uh, can benefit the group. So heading towards playoffs here, we've been talking about the Leafs finding their game, what it's going to look like, whether that's some physicality from the back end, a lot of scoring. The Panthers are second in the NHL in penalties taken. I think they end up shorthanded quite a bit. They play a uh, physical game. Is that at the, the root of their identity, is that physical play? It seems like you guys got pretty good defense and goaltending to go along with that. Yeah, Borny, I think you look, you look, you mentioned that, and I think it's been a hot topic of late. I mean, last, last game, I think the penalties were 6-1. to one. Uh, they've been kind of on the other side of that. Not saying that they weren't penalties. Yeah. I think the ones that you just can't live with are the offensive zone penalties, right? The ones that are a little bit lazy. You want to take that extra step. Get above the puck. Don't be reaching in there and, and, and give the opportunity for the ref to make the call. Uh, but it's one area I think they need to clean up. I mean, they're confident in their in their penalty kill. But we all know, you know, come playoff time, it could be that one kind of silly penalty. And we had one the other day, kind of like uh, Rodriguez along the boards, had time and kind of flung it over the uh, over the glass. And it seems like those penalties, delay game penalties, always seem to end up in your net, along with the offensive zone penalties. So um, it's an area that, yeah, you want to you clean up a little bit and maybe not play shorthanded as much. And it just takes a lot of guys out of the ribbon that don't mm-hmm. kill penalties because this team – usually runs four lines. And I think that's what's made them so good where you're not taxing your top guys on each and every night where you can roll the four lines in the 60 and have a well-balanced lineup. And that's what I think Bill Zito has done with this group and has given Maurice and they've executed well on it when they can roll those groups. When this uh, regular season winds down, Bobrovsky could be looking at close to 60 games in a season. And that's a number that, uh, you know, we don't talk about anymore for, for goaltendings, uh, goaltenders starting in the NHL. But is, is there any signs that this guy could tire it all moving forward? Uh, I don't know. I mean, all we hear about is how hard he works and, and uh, you know, the time he puts in the gym. And, um, you know, I, I, I think I, I'm going back to what you said, Kipper, too, is we don't see it much anymore. And I read the comments of Marty Verdure of late, you know, how we baby these goalies now and, and, you know, they're not playing as many games. But I think the Panthers, when you look at this situation here, Anthony Stolarz has come in and played excellent. So I think you can afford to give Bob some, some rest. You do want to have some consistency in your goaltending going into the playoffs. Uh, but you also want to give your, your number two guy some action just in case something happens. I think they're comfortable in that area. They're comfortable with Bob running with it, I think you know, down the stretch here. And I think they're in a good position there. Well, we're looking forward to tonight's game. Jovo, have a great call, and uh, we'll catch you down the road, okay? All right, guys, anytime. Thanks, Thanks. Jovo, appreciate it. Ed Jovanovsky, color analyst for the Florida Panthers. Mm. Bob's going to play that many games, eh? I think he's at, well, he'll be 54 tonight. Yeah. So I don't know, does he, 57, 56, 58? Before we got to draw, you were talking about how you've liked Matthews recently. 
Yes. Dive a little bit more in on that. Sure. What do you like? What well, is it that you see? Uh, I, I just see a. I just see a guy that uh, is thinking about more options. That's mm -hmm. what I see. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like to me, it's a no brainer that Marner comes back. They play together again. You know, like I don't love the idea of people being like, give Matthews his own line. You think Matthews just that Bertuzzi Domi line? You cannot. You can't even, I don't even envision one second of a puck drop in game one and Marner's not with Matthews. I know. That's the time to now experiment. Right. You know, Not a chance. Yeah, it'll be <clears throat> curious to see if Marner gets back early enough for them to experiment at all. And when's he coming back? Do you know? I think if everything feels good, he probably will play Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, like we're there. We're at that sort of arrival. A Riley skated as well, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. He did. So, yeah, you got you got the the bodies coming back yeah. with some runway, which is nice. This uh, this yeah, the timing could be good for the Leafs. I think by yeah by April twentieth. Is Everyone that could conceivably drop? be healthy? I did see they called up Marshall Rafai. Mm -hmm. So, you yeah. know, I, I and they needed to put Mitch on long term. Did uh, they? Uh, Retro. IR. Yeah. Mm -hmm. IR. Not LTL. long term. So why feels like we're starting way too late, the playoffs? Okay. Well, can I just add one more thing? And again, I, it's great that he got his 60th goal, the passion, all of that. I'm not telling him to stop scoring goals. Oh, boy. But <laughs> you've got nine games to go. Yeah. Uh -huh. It just cannot be about how high this number can get. And I don't blame him. I blame the media, and I blame people like you, Sammy. Okay, that just blame the drive media? The, because we it, are the because, media because it's it's everybody's obsessed with as high right, how high can he go? Yeah, and because it can is he get fascinating, some, right? It's, it's, it's fascinating to to see if he can have the all time greatest season as a Leaf or whatever. But for that to really happen, so yeah, to happen. You got to make him the priority for the next nine games. Well, who's got to make him the priority? The, the media just covers it. He doesn't have to do anything different. He, yeah, he has to. He has to play a little bit more selfishly to get seventy. But to oh, be but part not, of the media, like what? I actually, no, 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 I'm saying that, what we think. No, I'm I'm saying that it's it's media driven. Yeah, the the push, the constant. He ain't getting number. seventy. No. He's not gonna sniff seventy. No. People still want him to get seventy. I would like him personally. I would like him to, you know, get to McDavid's number from last year. That's sixty-five. Yeah, sixty-four is what McDavid. It's a great had. number. Yeah, it's fine. And listen, I just want him to go out there. The the focus has to be on the team being as prepped and ready yeah. as he can for game one. It can't be him chasing and hunting yeah. down goals. I actually think it's in the perfect scenario now where i thought he was chasing 60 pretty hard yeah right where yeah, the last couple of, yeah. last couple of games they he was taking fall away jumpers for sure but, you know, but he's also been there before but now yeah. that he's gotten 60 like he's got to have a hattie tonight for us to be talking about 70 like it really feels that it's going to be the perfect scenario where they're not being like should we play him in the last couple of games right. if he's on 67 or whatever? 63 like, or whatever, like whatever. Whatever it is, you can maybe give him a little bit of a blow down the stretch here, a couple games off before the end of the year. Like, I, yeah. I think it's the perfect I expect, scenario. I expect him to take a game off for yeah. sure. at the least. Final weekend, for sure. I wouldn't play him. Right? Like, I wouldn't. I mean, play him at all that not, weekend. I just don't want him to play against Florida a game before they play against him in the playoffs. That, to me, against a dirty team would concern me a little bit. But that's it. I think that's valid. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Our thanks to Jovo Cop. Yes. Don't go away. Adam Oates, always a fantastic guest on the Real Kipper and Born Show. He's going to join us Doing zoom. after the hour. Where are we going to find him? He's zooming. Zooming he in. Zooming? He's zooming from somewhere. All right. McDavid nearing 100 assists. If there's anyone that knows what that feels like, it's our next guest. Don't go away. More to come. The Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee. We are the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. We are back for our national edition of the Real Kipper and Bourne Show. Nick Kiprios, Justin Bourne, Sammy McKee. Eight games on tap tonight, which is 
a busy Monday night. Usually they're very quiet. Are Buddy, they not? Big, big hockey games tonight. Islanders, Flyers is a monster game. We're going to get into them all. We're glad you're aboard for the next hour. We are live on Sportsnet, Sportsnet 650 in Vancouver, Sportsnet 960 in Calgary. This hour, Real Kipper and Born, brought to you by Bet365. In a few minutes, we'll welcome in Hall of Famer Adam Oates. There's one guy that knows assists. It's this guy, one of the greatest passers in the history of our game. So, yeah, so McDavid's nearing 100 of them in a single season. 96 with 12 games to go. Man, he might have 115 of them. It's crazy. Only a handful of guys, right? Is it not insane? Including Brian Leach, I think may have been. What, he had 100? Oh, 102 maybe. Oh my God. Yeah. Is it not insane that Connor McDavid is going to go from 64 goals to like 30, like less than half his output from last year, and still have an insanely impressive season. Like, no one is talking about him taking any sort of step back, and he hasn't. So, it's just crazy to see someone decline. That's when you know you're really, really talented, when you can go from a 60-plus goal season to a 40-goal-plus season and then jack up your assists. Yeah. I, I mean, right? there's nothing more clear than him just being like, just so everyone knows, if I want to do the goal thing, yes. I can do it. Like what yes. Matthews is doing, if I wanted to, I'd play like that. But I, I think, don't prefer it. And I do believe that Austin Matthews is talented enough that he could... Try to be an assist guy? He could be an assist guy. That would be unbelievable. To have him declare it preseason and be like, I'm going to try to do assist this year. He could. Yeah. I think. And, and, and Nate McKinnon could... I, yeah, I think those guys... Right. I think they Nate McKinnon, if he focused like Austin to shoot the puck in the net... He could flirt with 60, 65 goals. I have a stupid question for you. Go ahead. Do we, we don't have a guess, do nope. we? This is You're an good. outwardly stupid question. Mm. If a guy like McDavid today said, I'm a defenseman, <laughs> he just said, I'm going to play D, I want to be a defenseman, what would we be looking at? Like, would he be an, all, an all-star? Would he be? You know, I had a conversation with someone uh, about Mitch Marner, yeah. right? Because he's dabbled on the, on the sure. back end. Yeah. So, no Lilligren. Like, if, if he was to play... Could he do a game? A, a few games here, yeah. down the stretch. Would you, would like, you, you try know, to put him on the I think he's line? an awesome defensive player. I think he'd get killed. I do. I think skating so, backwards, but, defending rushes, net front. So I, I think I, he'd get I worry killed. about anybody getting killed. Yeah, I me worry too. That's about not a Mitch Connor. Connor. I know. You want Connor to go back <laughs> and retrieve a puck? We're having a stupid moment, all right? Just give yeah, us a moment. Yeah, we are a stupid let, moment. Let us have a minute. And this is what, what do you call this? Talk radio? <laughs> Don't look at me. Yeah. You're the producer. We're talking about maybe the greatest... Maybe the greatest player in the history of hockey would be like, what if he was the defenseman? Well, and I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. So, in your opinion, yeah. no-brainer, he's an all-star mm. if he's defenseman this year. Who? Or next Conor, year. Conor, Conor McDavid? He plays D next year. He's an NHL all-star. I mean, yeah, because he's just going to be Conor McDavid. He's going to play forward. He's going to skate it up the whole ice. He's not going to play defense. He's going to be... You don't think so? You no. don't think he plays so, Simone Benoit? I'm, uh, I'm not and I declaring any forward an all-star. Like, I think it's tough. I think you get I, I think it's roasted like, defensively. He'd figure it out. Like, by halfway through the year, maybe he's like, good. Us, if we ever played outfield in the major leagues, there, there's certain portions like in between innings where we can stand there and look okay. <laughs> yeah. But once the game actually yeah, starts, uh, you're worried. Once they hit one into the alley. Only three people have ever had 100 assists in a season. Wayne Gretzky, a million times. 11, right? 11 times. Uh, Mary Lemieux and Bobby Orr. Mario. It was the only three. Leach is at, Leach's career high is 80. Maybe you're thinking of Bobby Orr. Maybe it was a... No... He had 100 points. points. 102 points. 91, oh, 92, and 100 right. points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. What was I thinking? Still, yeah, yeah, 102 points. I mean, oh, oh yeah, what yeah, a bad yeah. season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My God. 80, 80 points. 80 assists. Uh, 80 assists in a season, by the way. 80 assists. Yeah. And so yeah, right, I'm off 20. Right below Brain those cramp. guys that had 100 was uh, Mary Lemieux did again and had 98. Our guest who's coming up shortly had 97. And the next is Connor McDavid with 96. Currently. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of the list for 100 points for defense. Now, Coffee had 100 points a zillion times, right? Did he not come close to 100? You said Coffee's at 100 assists? This got to be our no. sloppiest segment never. of all time. I'm just, <laughs> no, Coffee's Paul never Co had 100 assists? Paul Coffee had 90 assists. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, I don't think it's sloppy. It's, we're talking about <laughs> stats. Talk, 100 assists in a season is unbelievable. Three, like, we talk about nine guys in yeah. the history of the league having two 60-goal seasons. A, 
that three coffee men, year. Three men ever have had 100 assists. Yeah. That's incredible. That and coffee year, he had 90 assists. He had 138 points. Wow. In the National Hockey League. That's crazy. Basement. Unbelievable. Yeah, he had 86 assists, 84 assists, 90, 83. God. So no D. Here, Wayne. No D it. with 100 helpers. Bobby Orr. Yeah, hey, Bobby Orr. Yeah, I mean, modern. No. No modern. No. So there you go. All right. Well, we'll get uh, Adam Oates to chime in on that. Yeah. We'll Easier get... or harder today. Well, you know, the goal scoring had gone up for a few years. It's kind of started to go down a little bit again. So it's going to be very hard. Quinn Hughes having a great year and still tough to get it anywhere near that ballpark. Edmonton plays St. Louis tonight. Mm-hmm. One of eight games on tap here. If the playoffs were to start today, it would be the Oilers and Vegas. Ah, oh, man, that's a tough bounce. Uh, looks like Tomas Hurdle is back on the ice mm. in Vegas, so he can yeah. help them. Let me check the old calendar. Yeah, it's April. Oh. April 1st. Like, it makes me feel like they literally said, wait till April. April 1st, get back on the ice. Then we can justify it as two, three weeks of conditioning. April 8th, 17th, you're good. Live, look at Oiler fans just clenching their fists. I know. Yeah. Some of the matchups were we to start today. Mm. Oilers, Vegas. Canucks would have Nashville. The Jets would get Colorado. Um, looking for Canadian teams here. Leafs would have Florida. And then Flyers, Rangers, Carolina, Washington, Boston, Tampa, LA, Dallas. Would be your matchups as it today. And three or four months ago, we would have said Vancouver, Nashville all day long. I know. Listen, I think Vancouver is a great team, and they're going to handle even Nashville. But, boy, that Predators team is kind of getting scary, aren't they? And, yeah, and by the way, a couple I'm of not, hiccups, I think, yeah, against uh, cool Arizona. Arizona. Lost a couple in a row, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, they weren't going to stay that hot the whole time. No, and I'm not backing off my thing that they're not that great. You know, mm. like they're just... That's they, fair. They're well-coached and play Saros, hard. Saros and... Listen, Roman Yossi, if that guy was in Canada right now, he may be the favorite... Why are we going to do this? I'm telling you. He he has talked about it all the time. He's made all-star games. He's literally won the Norris. Like, he is a very well-established. What's I mean, this guy? Nobody, What's his name? Nobody, oh, Roman Yossi. Every nobody, hockey who? fan. Nobody who? follows Roman Nashville. Who is that? <laughs> who is Roman Yossi? I've never heard of him. He's not underrated. He's great. Everyone thinks he's great. It's like the Barkov thing. Everyone knows he's great. He's not underrated. But we're still not watching Nashville. No, so. that's fair. Yeah. Um. Oh, you got Oatsy here. Yeah. Okay, let's welcome him in. Adam Oates, former NHLer, current Hall of Famer, president of Oates Sports Group. Oatsy, where are we catching you today, pal? Where are you? I'm in Jupiter, Florida, Kipper. I love Ooh. it. I love it, buddy. Well, Florida is a big hot topic here. Um, Leafs in uh, Florida. The anticipation is not only do they have two more games left to go here in the regular season, but they'll probably meet each other ot and uh what could teams be getting out of these last few games uh the next one would be april 16th a lot closer to game one but how about this one in particular what do you look for out of a game like this where playoff spots have been determined and it's unlikely they'll change you know it's a million dollar question i think everybody goes through every year you guys discuss it every year where the last 10 games uh, you know, you're trying to stay healthy. You're trying to get your guys organized. You're trying to, you're obviously trying to go into playoffs, going on all cylinders. And yeah, you know, you're playing a team that you might play. And does it matter? Uh, obviously, over the course of time, sometimes yes, sometimes no. But uh, you know, you want to try and have a good feeling. I imagine going into playing them. Uh, but I, I still think the priority is you want to get your team going on all cylinders, special teams. Uh, sharpen up defense, sharpen up offense, and just try and, you know, be ready for the start of it. One of the guys getting ready to, you know, for playoffs to try to be at his best is Austin Matthews. Just scored his 60th goal the other night, which a big deal. It's been interesting watching him since Mitch Marner has been out. He's kind of taken on a bit more of a distributor role, has looked like a bit of a different player. What are your thoughts on player, a guy like him being able to play differently? Like how much of him being a pure shooter is just playing with one of the best passers in the game and, you know, in terms of his adaptability? Well, first of all, 60 goals is fantastic, as we know. Yeah. 
And like you're right, you know, with with uh, Marner being out a little bit, it's changed his game a little bit. And it's like for me, I think that's good because things happen, right? Like what if someone goes down in a series? What if you need to play with different guys? You don't always get what you want. So the ability to adapt and be a little versatile, I think, is very healthy. You know, OT, we, we had a conversation here on on the best players in the world. And we put McKinn in there. We put McDavid, Matthews, all of them. If you're conscientious no, no, enough. No, no Kucherov in there? Yeah, Kucherov, of course. But like, if you're conscientious enough to say this year, I, I, I want to try to score 50, there's got to be an element of you, of your game that suggests that I, I'm, I'm going to shoot the puck a lot more and I'm not going to look for that extra pass. But are these guys talented enough to sit there and, and say that, you know, if, if Connor McDavid made it uh, a top priority to, to get 80, 90, or 100 assists, that means the, the goals are going to suffer. You're no longer a 60-goal scorer anymore because you're, you're conscientiously looking to pass the puck. Is that come into play, or are these guys taking what they're given on, on each shift and there's no way to really determine the outcome? I, you know what? That's a fantastic point. I would say it depends on your line mates, depends on where the power plays at uh, and how the team's going because it all matters. And, you know, like, are you going to tell me that I want to score more goals this year? So every two on one, I'm shooting. I can't imagine that those guys are doing that. I think they're trying to make the right play at the right time. And when you're at that caliber, you're going to get your points. And, you know, I read Con uh, Connor's comments the other day, which I thought were fantastic. Like he's been there before. You know, like the points are important, but obviously winning the games and playing correct is obviously a priority, which is which is correct. And I would hope all the guys think like that. So McDavid does have 96 points. He's one behind your uh, career high of 97, which is an insane amount of assists in the season. Were you aware of a hundred assist milestone? Would you have been chasing that at that time? Is it on his mind? Uh, well, it was on mine at that time. It was, yeah, was so it? I, and. You know, funny story, the last game of the year we played against Ottawa when Ottawa was just coming in the league, and they told Ray Bork to take the night off to rest. And I was like, no, 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 Bork. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I need you. He didn't play. So I was a little sour about it, but, you know, big picture. Uh, it was a great year. So, you know, like, yeah, I wanted 100 because it was a special number. But uh, it was just, you know what, you play hockey, right? OT, is it? Is it harder to get a hundred now or, or or back then in, in your era? Well, Gretz had no problem with it. Um, you know what? I would say it's the same. You know, the game was, uh, I would say, a little bit more violent when we played. So it was a little harder. There was a little bit different conditions. Uh, the goaltending is way better now in a sense. Uh, you know, like just to watch the guys play every night. And, you know, like like seriously, depending on your line mate, the type, the type of style the team plays. Uh, the power play, obviously, you know, I look at Matthews, I think he's only got like 25 power play points, and I think Cooch has 45. Like, so I think that's, a, you know, obviously that's a big difference over 80 games, right? So, you know, these things do factor into it, but I think I think generally when you watch guys play on a night-to-night -night basis, you get a feel of how good they are and where they're at in their game. Yeah, I mean, it is uh, fascinating to watch these skill guys. You talked about Kucherov, and you mentioned, you know, when you're talking about best players in the game, you don't have Kucherov in there. I don't know if he's a guy of yours or not, but you have him in that class of players, do you? What is it you see about his game that puts him in that company? Uh, I, I just think he's, you know, he's one of the 10, 15 guys in the league that are fantastic. Yeah. And he brings it every night. He runs the team. He runs the power play. Uh, and you know they're a team that over the going to three finals, you lose a couple guys. They're you know they're they got some answers and they're trying to figure it out. And he's you know he's he's carried the team this year. He's just an, a lousy all star. That's all. <laughs> well, that's negotiable actually. He's actually, he's actually very he's very smart. Very he, smart. Oh yeah, like the obstacle course was not fair. Is that his stance? <laughs> huh? he, he didn't think it was fair. Is that right? And I, I'm on his side. The, the cones were set up too wide. Connor's 6'3", he's 5'10". That's okay. four inches of reach. I love it. But, but you know what's fantastic is he 
he called me after. He goes, did you see the course? And I went, yes, I did. He goes, oh, it's not fair. And I go, I know. And he goes, and they got mad at me, and it's not fair. I go, I know, buddy. I'm on your side. <laughs> I love that. It's so true. Did, did we know like, this? Was this a... No. I've never heard that I've before. I've never heard well, this before. It's like goalie equipment, well, you, right? You, you do it for the size the weave, of the build. Right? The little weave. They set up the cones at a certain distance. I'm sure they didn't know either. But Cooch is only 5'10", so when he starts to reach to go around the cone... He kind of had to reach a little farther. So it kind of lost his balance a little bit to keep the momentum going in the course, where it was perfect height for Connor. See, I'm so happy you shared this with us because now I like him again. No, see, I'm still not in on it. Oh, not, no, no. That's old. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. The fact, the fact that he gave up, he went to win. So as soon as he yeah. lost the puck, he knew it was over. Very, very, there, I'll take that attitude. I'll take that, that all or bust attitude. It, it seems that, when it. Oh, see, when it, it seems like the Tampa Bay Lightning are, are doing a lot of winning lately here. Yeah. What is it about their game? I, we always knew they had world-class talent, but what is what stood out for you in the last month and a half, two months with this hockey club that's already put them right up there with the Boston Bruins and the Florida Panthers and the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Atlantic right now to come out on top? You know what? Obviously, they've got a great power play. They can score goals. They also get power plays. Uh, you got Victor Hedman on the blue line, and you got a fantastic goalie in Vasilevsky. And that, you know, that, that cures a lot of ills when he's making saves on grade eight chances that we kind of forget about. Yeah, you know, we've been talking about some of the elite players in the game, and I wanted to take you to Chicago and Connor Bedard, the kid in his first season. Not sure how much you've got a chance to watch him play, but 57 points, pretty close to a point per game at 18 years old. Um, but they don't win, so he's minus 1,000 because he's on the ice all the time. What are your thoughts on his uh, debut in the NHL this season? Honestly, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I didn't like to see him get hurt, of course. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he's done fantastic. I really did because, obviously, the team is in a rebuild um, and winning's hard and it's a tough environment. And every night, he's already playing against the best. He's playing against the best D. So, you know, I think he's done a great job considering who's who every night he has to match up against. You know, one of the first things that stood out to me at the beginning of uh, the season was the amount of minutes that he played, and I thought it would kind of curtail a little bit, but it didn't. And, you know, that's that's their choice, obviously, to break in his rookie season playing upwards of 20 minutes a night here. But... Can they do that again next year, Otsi, and, and the year after? Or at some point you want to try to protect this kid while he's still in a development stage? Is that fair to say? Or is he just too good to to to, to think of him that way? No, you know what? I, I think it's a very valid point. Like, where are they going to be next year? They're obviously going to get a good pick. Uh, what are they going to do free agency wise? You know, where are they going to be at? And you're, they're obviously trying to look at it as we have to try and build this team around this guy, which is smart. But to your point, the last thing you want to do is expose him on a night to night basis where, you know, we don't, we, we just def definitely don't want to see him get hurt. And, and I, I also think he's a smart player. So I, I don't think he puts himself in tough positions all the time, but it's a tough game. It really is. So like, to your point, you know, you're hoping the team gets a little better and surround, surround him with better players so that he gets to develop. Oh, see, he's not going to get a chance to see playoffs this season, but for these skill guys who do get to see playoffs, is it a much different game, you know, when you're used to kind of... I know it changes a lot, but as a skill guy in those games, I'm thinking about a guy like Mitch Marner moves laterally, doesn't get hit, makes a lot of slip passes. You know, how is playoffs different for a guy like that? Is it just a matter of playing better teams is harder? You know, I mean, uh, Kipper can answer as well. My feeling after a couple of years was every series, game one and game three, was pretty physical. You're either our opening night or then we're game three or going to their building. And obviously their team now is going to have five more guys with more hits. So you got to survive the first period in the game because, you know, game one and three are a little bit different. And then it kind of goes into a series. Yeah. So that was sort of my attitude towards it was to try and survive game one and game three and, you know, try and somehow produce and because the game was a little more physical. Oh, see, with well under 10 games to go in the, the regular season here, is, is there 
Is there one team that stands out? We know what the favorites have been uh, predominantly throughout the regular season, but is there is there one team that that you can say don't sleep on? You know what, honestly, I, I had a feeling that was going to be one of the questions, and my mind has switched a couple times, and then teams have made some moves, and I still think they're sorting through the moves. So, like, right now, obviously, you look, um, you know, the Rangers, uh, Colorado's on my list, Vancouver. I also think Carolina is, you know, they play a very unique system, and I haven't necessarily been a great fan of it, but I also think they're a better team. Mm. So, uh, you know, I'm interested to see how they play out. And obviously, matchups matter. And there's still 10 games. So, you know, hopefully no one gets an injury down the stretch. So, I think, I still think there's a lot of hockey to, to be ter- determined. Yeah. Well, I just want to get one more in before we let you go. Appreciate your time. Um, uh, Zach Hyman scored 52 times this year. I can't think of a, you know, just a more unique 52 goal score. I don't think you see something like this. What are your thoughts on how he's got to this career milestone? You know, uh, once again, fantastic, right? Like, he he has definitely fit in with some <clears throat> fantastic left-handed guys, right? So and that matters. He's right-handed with two lefties. And, you know, the power play's elite. Um, they score a lot of goals, and he's a big part of it. He is. And being the right-handed guy that has to take the punishment, net front, and bang home rebounds, obviously he gets rewarded a lot as well. But, you know, when you watch them every night, you see this guy every night, too, which is fantastic. I know their their body types are much different, but uh, Dave Anderchuk comes to mind in terms of a guy around the net that can find loose pucks and, and bury them, if not uh, getting a, a great pass, right, and one-timing it. Yeah, great example, for sure. He, he scored 500, didn't he? Oh, that's maybe six. It's a lot. <laughs> that's impressive. <laughs> it's not 97 oh, assists, impressed. though. I, I, Ivan's been impressive this year, for sure. Yeah. All right, OT, really appreciate your time as always, man. Uh, enjoy uh, the rest of the season, and we'll, we'll call upon you in the playoffs, okay? You got it, guys. Thank you very much. Thanks, OT. Appreciate that is it. the great Adam Oates. Sure. What a passer. 1,079 assists. Zach, I'm in a set, uh, 20 this year. He's at 20. 52 and 20. There's always a couple things that come out of interviews with OT. There's, that I listen, never there, thought we were going to get to. There's no interview like Adam Oates. You need 300 questions, and he says four fascinating things every time. <laughs> the thing about Kucherov yeah. and how McDavid, like it was like he made it. For, he McDavid, Michael Jordan to the course. Like Michael Jordan has this course where he takes everybody to and course, rinses yeah. them because it's, it's designed like, to all his drives and, yeah. and like everything is for him. Yeah, it was Connor's course. It was okay. Connor's course. Uh, do not fall into that propaganda. Listen. It's it's Connor hockey. came home. He wanted to impress his future team. It's, he wanted to win the All Star. It's hockey, just like in basketball. They don't lower the net when it's not Wimbanyama. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's he's seven four, so he gets the tall net, but the smaller guy gets a lower one. Like that's where the cones are because you're playing the same sport. If you can't do it as fast as him because he's bigger, he's better. Okay, fair. So I was one of eighteen thousand people booing. At the All Star <laughs> yeah. weekend here in <laughs> Toronto, <laughs> okay. so watched him quit, yeah. right? Yeah. And I didn't like it. My kid was crying. He was like, "Daddy, <laughs> what <laughs> <is> <laughs> an insult to the game, Father Papa." His right? morals, I Papa. Didn't, <laughs> I didn't like it, but you know, after speaking to Otsi here, yeah. I can see a Kucherov mentality, which says, "If I, if I." I'm either winning or losing. Yeah, I'm fine and with that. If I know I'm losing, then it's I'm over. Out. I'm, out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> That's it's funny. But there's also a big part of me that just absolutely loves him as a player. Yes. Right? Yeah. I think he's and maybe you, the most unique guy there, in the There's league. no quit in him. I like that, yeah. When, when the game's on the line. He's, so he... Yeah. I'm giving oh, him no, a mulligan. No, no, he's a competitor. I'm giving it, him a there's mulligan. There's actually a point to be made that he quit Three because Three months later, yes. the boys yeah, are giving him a All-star game takes. <laughs> uh, there's a point to be made that he quit because he's so competitive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, Which sounds backwards, but might be true. I'm the Zach Galifianakis <laughs> giver. Listen, <laughs> the mere fact that he called a Hall of Famer in OT and complained about... Yeah. The obstacle the says of the that he cares. cares. He cares. Which I love again. Yeah. yeah. But we didn't know that before. Well, that's I'll it. say I don't buy the argument, but I like that he has one. Um, <laughs> the other thing he said that 
I don't know, do you feel the same way about one and three being the big games that are physical? That's a great line, too. Because it makes one, sense. One hundred percent. That yeah. is your first chance to make an impression. That's your first chance to set the tone. And even the Leafs have started their beef in those games. I'm either chasing you or you're chasing me off my first shift, mm-hmm. right? Who got the better of the lick in? Who got the better chirp in? You just want to out of the glass is, in that first shift. Right? I just wanna, asked Kyle Clifford about that. Yes. I want to go and make you react to what I do. Yeah. So, you know, if somebody hits me or hits my teammate, I got to go back and hit somebody there. Yeah. And that's where you get the initiate, don't retaliate uh, mentality. But I get the idea, too, that game three, you're back in the other team's building. It's their first game in their building to establish their home ice, their crowd, their momentum. Most often than not, right, game three is like a game one because there's probably a split, right? More often, yeah. So the feeling is we're, on, we're completely on equal. But even if not, it's desperation time for one mm-hmm. team, right? Like there's always a reason for game You're three. You're down 2-0. Be... It's a different feel, but yeah. I think more off it's a 1-1 feel, and the game three can, again, reset that mm. that feeling like we're all equal here. And I gotta, I gotta start getting you. And there's to still a lot of me. series runway from there, right? There's still incentive to set tone by great game seven. I mean, never the tone. Just set. hope someone wants to kill you. You just want, but you also just want them to go in off the ref's ankle or something. Yeah, like you don't you're care just about tone at that point. It's funny, like I uh, on my TikTok algorithm, I have a lot of like big hockey game moments. So it's like just these random games from over the years. It's just like. Sort of a quick highlight reel of them. Yours isn't just a hydraulic press breaking things and labradoodles? No, I had that too. Okay, good. I had that too, and golf and <laughs> music and whatever. Okay. But it's funny because you think of, it's like game seven of the Stanley Cup finals. There's like highlights of that Blues Bruins. It's like, boy, this is a slow game. Mm-hmm. It's like by the time, time you, you get, get there, there, it's like these guys are like, oh my God, please. Out of gas. Someone bounce one in. Yeah. But like the first two games of a playoff series, it's the most electrifying thing you can watch. There's nothing like round one, game one no, in the NHL. It's the best thing Ooh. ever. It's incredible. The pace. And it, the Leafs are going is, up against Florida in their great. home barn. I just don't like the way it... <laughs> the markets are the key. It's not... It's the markets, right? You need big markets in. It does lose its energy. You don't think Florida's going to be humming for game one? No, I'm saying once you get past oh, yeah. the first couple of rounds, if you yeah. don't have big markets involved, the NHL does lose steam yeah. if sure. the big markets aren't involved. It's a it's a massive Which makes disadvantage compared to basketball where the top seeds almost always get through. And, uh, uh, it, Which and is it, why every, we need to stack it more in the favor of the good teams. It's almost as if the last few 100%. years you lose interest as the as as the playoffs progress and we won't we, we like it the other way around. Yeah. Well, first off, it shouldn't start April 20th. Yeah, it's the way too late. The whole thing should points. move a month the other direction, but they're afraid of the NBA or NFL. They're afraid of the NFL. Still, it should be starting to. So, like, yeah. Right. So, I, I think yeah. the NHL, if Gary, you could sign him up for conference finals, it would be Bruins Rangers in know, the what's East. every outdoor game? Chicago, Bruins Rangers, Boston. and then, I guess, there's a lot of Canadian teams, so he wouldn't like that. But, I don't know, Colorado LA or something like that, maybe right. in the West. Throw it in the suggestion box. Well, I'm just saying. I just said, what is the idea? You're talking about I know. big markets. I know. A lot of the big markets in the West are not like Chicago's not in there, you know, and they're not going to be in there for a while. I don't know. Maybe there's less good markets. Less okay. Good. Game okay. time. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, let me get my sheet here. It's game time presented by Bet365. Tr- Tristan it's- already had his sheets oh, prepared God. and ready to be read. Tristan, I, <laughs> sorry, buddy. All right, it's game time. Presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds. Find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Now it's Monday, so I'll do a quick check-in on the Stanley Cup favorites, as I like to do usually once a week. Uh, the uh, favorite in the NHL to win the Cup is the New York Rangers at 6-1, to one, according really? to Bet365. Yep. Man, the there's next, no clear favorite. Then the next closest is Edmonton at plus 650, Carolina plus 700, Dallas plus 700, Colorado 750, Vancouver 850. Florida. Florida is 9 to 1 on bet 365. There's your bet. Bruins 11 to 1, Vegas 11 to 1, Leafs 15. Oof. To me, if Vegas. you're if you're going to sneak one in there, the Lightning 16 to 1. Yeah. 
Good bet. You know, Vasilevsky really goes crazy. Like... They've been hot. They, to me, are like a team that's... They could be last year's Florida. Yeah, Coop's just lurking, being like, oh, we're the underdog? Yeah, he's like, this is my ideal <laughs> scenario. Did Stamkos just get his 30th? Uh, yeah, a battered one out of the air, I think. What are they going to do with him? Probably pay him. Like I said, probably pay him eight bucks for eight years. No. Which is equivalent to 10, 12 million here. Times I think I, I think I think his future's really tied into what happens here? Yeah. Really? So like a deep run, he stays, yes. they go out early, he leaves. Well, I think Where the hell's he I don't I don't necessarily just leave it as Nashville. He stays or he goes. It'll have a lot to do with the leeway they'll have for him to sign him. Mm-hmm. Right? So he could still end up there, but I think a harder take it or leave it offer would come with a first round exit compared to maybe a conference final. Yeah, mm. does that make sense? Absolutely, yeah. it does. If you're Stamkos, you've made so much money. You're set there in Florida. You've won cups. Yeah. You're like, I'll, I'll take less. Let's just, yeah. let's stay here, please. But does it? Is it a three? Right. Do they try to take advantage a, of him? Could he sneak out a four-year contract, a three-year contract? Would they offer him just a two-year deal? If I'm deal? Sam Coast, I'm like, give me, give me 20 mil. Call it four years. I don't know if they'll give him that much. Okay, give me 20 mil, five years? Do you think he's that low, AAV, like four mil a year? I, I think it's the four years that they would have I see. an issue with. Maybe. So they'd want to go shorter. They want to go shorter. Maybe they get five. Old. Maybe they get he gets five or six for three years, but I don't know if he'll get four years. Ah, uh, yeah, That's you'd all. rather do that if you're them. All right, a uh, couple big games tonight, as we mentioned. Uh, the Leafs. Not often you're going to get the Leafers as a underdog Dogs on home at ice. Home. Yeah, plus one ten. Uh, the Florida Panthers are a minus one thirty favorite tonight. So if you like to bet on the Leafs, you don't get them as an underdog very often. So there, and the one we'll talk about maybe a little bit more. Good players. Uh, yeah. And another one you'll talk about a little bit more in news and notes. The Islanders and Flyers play tonight. The Ooh. Islanders are plus one hundred and five uh, on the on the road against Philly, minus one twenty five. So that's a big one tonight. And yeah, the other ones really. Tampa's fighting for their life. They're playing. Oh, sorry, Detroit's fighting for their life. Playing for for yeah, Tampa. Let, let, but let's save assessment of that Islanders Flyers one for the other side. It doesn't look good for old uh, Detroit. Uh, that was game time presented by Bet365. Visit the app for latest odds and find out why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 19 plus. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. Okay. As Justin just teed up when we return, the snails race <laughs> for a playoff spot in the National Hockey League after the break. We're live. Back at the Real Kipper and Boring Show. Nick Kiprios, Frick, and Frack. <laughs> Joining me officially, we I am the Huzu? voice of reason. You see, we got our first totally. ever tweet to the show that says Kip is the voice of reason. This is totally, uh... totally agree with that assessment. <laughs> <laughs> that what? don't make no, that don't make no sense. Listen, this show's getting canceled if I'm the voice of reason. <laughs> That's for sure. All I right, think Borny well, is definitely the voice of reason. Too much. Jamie, Sometimes I got some takes. Jamie Drysdale. Joining the Philadelphia Flyers for the first time in, what, 16 games as they take on the New York Islanders. This is um, a playoff race in the East for a final spot, mm-hmm. unlike I think we've ever seen before. Where Who teams, can lose the least? Teams can, like the Islanders, have gone, what, 3-7-1 and one, and are still in this Made thing. Up ground. Let me tell you, so... If the Flyers win tonight, they'll have, this is according to Money Puck, they'll have an 83% chance of making playoffs if they win tonight. If they lose, they'll have a 55% chance of being playoffs. Wow. One game is going to swing it 22 and a 23% chance, which is massive. So big game. <laughs> Large game is what I'm yes. saying. Yeah, yeah. And for the Flyers, or sorry, for the Islanders, if they win, they'll have a 21% chance to get in versus a 4% chance. So. Whoever all or nothing, baby. Whoever ends up with this spot, they don't get to be the Cinderella team. I think at this point, whoever's getting it is the ugly stepsister. <laughs> all ugly stepsisters going to the ball. <laughs> One of them gets to go. You stay ugly. 
Go there ugly. This you is, be ugly. You come home ugly. Story. You leave early. <laughs> you leave early. <laughs> <laughs> you leave the ball early. Yeah. And you you're eat not the pumpkin th- later. <laughs> and it turns, yeah. You're not the, sticking around. Is, you know, could you see either the Flyers or the Islanders no. doing any damage against, say, Boston or the Rangers? I don't know. I mean, no. No, but this I think is the, the NHL. Have, I think the Islanders have playoff build. They're old, they're old and slow. I think that's... <laughs> is this Daryl Sutter? Eight days? Yeah, I think, Borny, that's more of just like... Here is the, not here, like your bias. Take. Here's my sincere take. That's like two years ago, Islanders. Here's my sincere take. Yes. The Bruins nor the Rangers are running away with it as a President's Trophy favorite. I, I don't see either team as being, I don't know, an elite team the way I saw Colorado two years ago, Vegas, those sort of teams. I don't see them as those teams. The Islanders have a very good goaltender in Sorokin who can get very hot. Mm. And they do have guys like Nelson and Lee and these sort of like bigger. So I do think they would be annoying to play in the playoffs. Yeah. They've been a you know, good D who have been hurt most of the year, who can get healthy. I think they'd get smoked. It'd be a tough five games for sure. It would be a tough five <laughs> games. That's exactly my point. I don't think they'd get walked, but yeah, they, they would. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway, it's my Islanders take for the day. Uh, Rangers, President's Trophy. You know, okay. Like I said, no one this year is running away with it. Like even you go to the West, Dallas is winning. They, they have been impressive though. The Rangers. Yeah, yes. they're on a bit of a run. What are they in their last? They're eight and two in their last ten. Nah, uh, Lafreniere five straight has wins. Kind of saved his Ranger career. Hattie, buddy, his first NHL Hattie. I know, game. but I think it was getting to that fork in the road with the Rangers that if if it's not happening with them, does he get another chance somewhere else? And he's he's turned into a very dangerous player right now for them. A bunch of cowards didn't go ahead and buy him when you could have got him. Like, there, maybe there's a chance you could have traded for that guy. I think it was pretty clear that he was going to be an, an NH- NHL player. He now has 25 goals, most of which have come since the All-Star game. I yeah. think 14 of them, which is a 40-plus goal pace. If he's a 30-plus goal scorer at 6'2 and plays as competitively as he does, I'd love the player. Mm-hmm. So, and good for the Rangers, yeah, good for him. Well, to I, th- I think the Rangers have kind of gone to another level because he has yeah. as well as a as a depth score. And what's impressive too is I don't think he gets a ton of power play time either. Like he is not on the mm-hmm. top unit. So to, for him to be on this type of pace, uh, majority of it coming even strength is another good sign for the Rangers. And for sure. you, you even love it. Even, you love it even more that he is, uh, I looked at the wrong guy. What's that? <laughs> what are you thinking? Nothing. All good. Continue. It is Fascinating. You know, we just had Oates on. He talked about power play points. Um, I once made a comment when I worked with the Kyle Dubas to him. I was like, yeah, but Nylander gets all his points in the power play. And his comment to that was like, do they not count? Like, do you not need people to produce yeah. in the power play? It's So this isn't me taking away from power play points. But it is interesting looking at the, you know, we talk about the Leafs every day. And their top guys just don't get power play points compared to other top guys, Kucherov, McKinnon, McDavid, 1, 2, 3, 46, 44, 42. Mm-hmm. Leafs' top guy is Nylander somewhere. He's in 11th. Matthews is 32nd. Marner's 39th. Like, they don't, they're not power play merchants the way. Which is, like, again, pretty incredible that a guy like Austin can put 60 goals at this point mm-hmm. and have what, one of the worst power plays since... January. Yeah. Oh, well, they were like if, atrocious. If, if they had a if they had a top five power play all year long, would he not be close to seventy right now? I mean, it could be the difference. They Matthews has uh fifteen power play goals, which is tied for fourth with Nikut Nachushkin, Hyman and Stamkos, and then ahead of Besser, sixteen, Dry Settle nineteen, Reinhardt twenty seven. Mm. Yeah, there you go. It'd be amazing what their power play could do if they could complete a pass. <laughs> or may even attempt. But we're also, them. you know, the other <laughs> thing me, too is you, we're in that era where all the big boys just, like there is, it's such a fine line to call them second power play units yeah. anymore. There's the first and the 11th unit. There, there's you get, like, there's as the much first as the power play. and then there's the last 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, Jonathan Quick passed Ryan Miller. Most career wins by an American goalie. Really? Yes. There you go. He's just 
been another amazing story. And he got another contract, right, with the Rangers? I want to say yes, two-year he did. deal. He did. That's awesome. Which is pretty impressive. What's well, a perfect guy? Alaire. You think so? You give him a lot of credit? Yeah, I do. I do. Just to whisper. I mean, but it's a perfect guy to back up Shesterkin, right? Where it's a guy that's got experience. He's not. He knows that the point of his career he's at. Like that, and he's played really well this year. I, I just think that's a perfect guy to back up a star. Who did he tenure. pass? Did he, uh, Ryan Miller? Yeah, Ryan Miller. Yeah. yeah. Did we have... Who do we have as the greatest American goalie in history? Is your boy... Is Richter in that conversation? Is he... I think... Yeah, he should be in the conversation, but uh, Barrasso and... Sammy looks like top know. wins. It's, well, it's not really a... Like, we don't... It seems like forever we've been throwing out Mike Medano's the greatest American hockey player or Patrick Kane's the greatest U.S. hockey player, mm -hmm. but we've never really thrown out who's the greatest so, U.S. goalie is. The top five wins for uh, American-born goalies, Jonathan Quick is one now, Ryan Miller, two, John Van Beesbrook, three, Tom Barrasso, four, Craig Anderson, five, Mike Richter, six. Craig Anderson? I guess he was played till he was yeah, 41. played a lot. And then Connor, Hel with, Connor Hellebuck is number seven. Brasso Ooh, with two he's Stanley got, he's got Cups. A lot of years left in his right? deal, too. Pardon? Brasso with two Stanley Cups. Mm hmm. And Quick with one. Oh, no, two. Quick with one, one, two with LA. Yeah, yeah two with yeah. LA, sorry. Yeah. Two with LA. Bra uh, Van Beesbrook, no Stanley Cups. This tale on Quick's career is going to, like, I know he was already a Hall of Famer, but it's going to give him some pretty impressive career stats by the time it's all said and done. Yeah. Um, oh, he's just a lock. He's just such a worker, you know. He's so competitive too. Jack um, Campbell, 29th all time. With, oh, uh, with, uh, I was having fun with uh, stats here while we were talking about stuff. Plus minus is led uh, by four defensemen in the NHL right now. Um, do you guys want to take a guess? Teams are Florida, Edmonton, uh, Winnipeg, Vancouver. Quinn Hughes. Quinn Hughes is fourth at plus 38. What's the guy they claimed off waivers? Forsling. Forsling is first in the NHL, plus 46. And then and he just got a new contract, plus didn't he? Plus 46. Oh, that's so my good. God. Eight-year yeah. eight deal. Eight-year deal. And for then two not that and much. three also on Canadian. Actually, four of the top five are on Canadian teams. It's uh, Eckholm, DeMello, Hughes, then it's McDavid, then McKinnon, I, I think, Hyman, I think Veronic. there's some teams, including the one in this city here, that should be kicking themselves for letting Edmonton scoop up Eckholm. I mean, it's not like we didn't talk about him every he, day leading up to that deadline. Uh, like, I love this guy on that blue line. I think he is the absolute glue back there. In my original fake trade, I had a Leafs fake trade for Eckholm. That was, that was the same time they did McCabe, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Top time on ice among the NHL. Uh, there's, there's five defensemen that lead it. Uh, would you care to wager who leads the NHL in ice time? Drew Doughty. Drew Doughty's number one. That's impressive stuff. Yeah. I didn't even look it up. But I, it's just, I mean. How, you, how many? 22? 25, 49 a night. Wow. Yeah. Drew Doughty and then. It's John Carlson, Rasmus Dahlin, Seth Jones, Mike Matheson. So primarily guys on bad for teams. crappy teams. Yeah. You're the only guy. Brock Faber is seventh as a rookie. 25, 03. Wow. McCarr and Hedman are 9, 10. Is, is it the first forward? Is just defense you're doing? Just uh, No, this is total. Okay. Where's the first forward the on that list? The first forward to show up. Where are you? Miko Rantanen, 2313. Wow. McKinnon, tw about 23 minutes, 2257. Hmm. Um, That's a lot. McDavid, 21. Not on the first page this year, which is. Uh, which is helpful. Yeah. Jesus, a lot of. Uh, Kucherov's ahead of him, McDavid. McDavid's playing 2131. Gonna have 100. So the assists. Oilers, if I'm not mistaken, play 10 games. Let me take double check. Ten games in the next eighteen. Yep, that's days. correct. Wow, that's a heck of a finish. That is like that's tough. That's a you, bad schedule. Do you, do you want do you want McDavid playing all of those? No, but they're in a weird spot. You know, twenty one minutes. Like you could still get caught. Eh, Vegas. You can't. You can't turn it off that guy, right? For he's, McDavid, he's mock speed all the time. Yeah, you don't think you would willingly go out? How well, about what Oak I'm saying say is, he asked he, for he, to play. He, he won't even willingly uh, like. Take it easy in a game no. if he's playing. No, you couldn't tell him, hey, just like, you know, dump don't it. finish any checks just or get it, it in hey, deep. Or... Hey, just be the third man high. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like you should be allowed to tell a guy that, right? You're the coach. We got a season to think about. Like, but guys, yeah, he's just not wired that way. No, you know why? Because it's awesome. 
to play hockey yeah. like Connor McDavid. He's like, do what? Yeah. No, I'm just going to be you this guy. You drive my Lamborghini yeah. to speed limit? Yeah, no thanks. 25 points away from, from 1,000 already. I, yeah, I think if you got him to 100 assists, which he's got 96, and they play nine more games, he said. So get him there, get him 30 goals, get him a nice round number of 30 goals, 100 assists, and then, you know, let him he take the last couple to, off. He wants to catch Vancouver. That's what he wants. You think so? Yes. So they're six points back, but they have two games yes. in hand, and they and play. play. And they play against each other. But yeah. they have to go ahead fully. They can't be tied because oh. they'll have the tiebreaker, right? Then they win three. Of, didn't the Vancouver win three of those games already? Vancouver has five more regulation wins right now, so presumably they would have whatever tiebreaker. And was there a head-to-head -head of some kind? Yeah, because I don't they beat know. The I don't know which is first. If it's I feel like if you win head. eight one at any point throughout the season, it's over. It's over. It's yours. <laughs> <laughs> you got to pass. It. <laughs> first game of the season. Yeah, the win by a touchdown. You yeah. win the head to head. Yeah, that's funny. And yeah. Vancouver's schedule. They should, they, by the they, way, they're, they're the West control. playoff race is over. St. Louis is officially cooked, so that one's done. They got Vegas twice. Vancouver. Yeah, it's tough because they're going to have Tomas Hurdle in the mix, followed shortly thereafter by Mark Stone's. Healing spleen. The squids called up uh, Shane Wright. That's good. I, I mean, has he done anything in Coachella Valley this year? Let me look it up for you, buddy. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate no that. Problem. But yeah, no, that's good. I mean, at the end, this point of the season for Seattle, nothing to play for. Might as well get the kid in the NHL. You plan on having him on the roster next year, presumably. He's had a, a good year for Coachella Valley. He's got. 43 points in 56 games, 20 goals, 23 assists. So nice. he's been he's been good down there. Good. The only thing you're going to have to do is just kind of curtail your expectations for Career. You know, top five kind of guy. He's going to be, you hope he has a good, solid career. You'd like him to be a 60-point contributor. Uh, I don't even, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Yeah. Can he check? Can he, if he's not, can he be a 20 and 20 guy? Yeah. That I mean, you know what that, sucks, that, though? It sucks that, like, guys it. can't go down to the American League without people saying, well, they're never going to be, you know, whatever. Like well, he's... we just spoke of Lafreniere mm -hmm. a second ago. What about Byfield, boys? Just, Byfield's it, 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 unbelievable, it, it, but he didn't. Oh, he did play a year yeah. in the American League, yeah. Well, that was during the pandemic, so he had a, a window there that maybe some other guys mm -hmm. at his age would not have been able, eligible. For him. So, but I don't know. It's The problem is he's top five billings at yeah. the draft that you got to be the next one or the franchise or the future it's tough it's, you know i was worried that slavkovsky might become that but he obviously turned a point a corner this season he's become an important player there for montreal i think he'll have a big year next year pat what maroon's like, back on the like, ice like big you mean he, he can be a numbers guy yeah. you think he can score yeah. 40 no 30 yep probably 30 70 points sure that's exactly. I, Can he, he turn himself into a if Landis he, cog? If he's thirty and seventy at six foot four at twenty years old, I mean, yeah, pretty damn good. Really good. That's a good spot. I mean, that's a bit of an over projection. It's know. a lot. It is a lot. He's got forty one points. He's got fifteen goals. Yeah, fifteen goals, forty one points. What else are we hearing? Pat uh, Maroon yeah, practiced Pat. with the Bruins. For the first time since he was acquired by Minnesota. Since he had back surgery. It sounds like everyone we've talked to out of Boston didn't love their deadline ads, but I guess Maroon could come in and yell at some people. <laughs> be Maroon? Be mar Maroon it up. It'd be fun to watch. I love the love watching him play hockey. You do? Yes. I disagree. Why? Because yeah, he just sticks it to your Leafs, that's why. Well, he did until... We do not agree. Luke Shen beat the wheels off him pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, in the right before the playoffs, I think it was the game... Before they they played and he fought him and knocked him out of the game and yeah. it was never really the same. But yeah, so and, here we go, boys. Yeah, last shout out uh, for a Canadian team, Vancouver Canucks were the first Canadian team to clinch a playoff spot. Congratulations to them. They made T-shirts about it. Did they? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so they? listen, the Vancouver Canucks, the actual we, team. We, we oh, think, yeah. before we go, April Fools, but I think they did. Before yeah. we go, I mean, we 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 do. Well, with guests, right? Yeah. But I'm feeling the pressure right now to get Jeff Rimmer on our uh, show this I know. week. We have okay. to. Okay. It's going to happen. Shouldn't be that bad. On the specs. He, like, he was the biggest After star all the in the weekend. on this show? The play oh, by yeah. play man for Columbus was the biggest star this weekend. And Doug McClain has been rude to him every day we've ever had Horribly him Horribly rude. Yes. We and need gonna... Jeff Rimmer to come and defend himself. Without Doug. Just, just Rimmer. Well, for maybe five minutes without Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Eight games on tap. Pick yours. Enjoy it. And we're back tomorrow on The Real Kipper and Born Show. Have a great night, everybody.